preparing to put an audio or an audio video system uh, into a given room, um, there is a very hidden and dark gremlin you have to be aware of, and it's called your electric feed. I mentioned this because I've run into situations where people have a desire to put a system in any given location um, and ignore what's going on in the background. And what's going on in the background is what happens with where are the power feeds to the system. Um, here we've done rails, you know, in a commercial setting where we know where the electric is and control. But when we talk about the actual power feed coming into the room, the panel box itself is placed in a position where it's not going to interfere with what's going on with the audio video system. And we're not only talking about the 110 lines, but we're talking about the 220 coming into it. And I've seen cases where people uh, literally want to put a system right where the 220 uh, power feeds coming into the house and the panel boxes in the basement. Um, the electrical hum field that comes off of that is just monstrous and will really definitely affect performance and not in a good way. Um, so trying to make sure that your power feed um, to the system is not only good, but separated away from um, what you're doing is really important. Um, if you have to run speaker lines uh, or interconnect lines, lines um, around power lines, um, there's some basic guidelines to that. Um, number one is if you have to cross a power line, uh, you do so in a 90 degree angle because the hum field follows the actual cable. So if you're crossing it at 90 degrees, that cable is not going to pick it up. Um, the other one you can run into is having to run parallel um, to a power line itself. Um, the general rule of thumb there is if it's a good shielded cable, um, you can get away with um, uh, 10 feet or less. Um, if you're gonna to have to run, and there you can be separated by a foot. Um, if you're gonna to have to go beyond 10 feet, substantial length, you really need your, your speaker lines um, and really your, your uh, Cat 5, Cat 6, two feet away from running in parallel. Uh, otherwise you run the risk of interfering, uh, creating a hum within the cable itself um, or interfering with the performance of your internet service. For those people who are doing new construction, you really, really have to watch out for the electricians um, because one of the things they like to do is their job very quickly. So if your installer drills the holes in the beam so he doesn't wreck the quality of the beam and he's running his line, the electrician, when he has to do a change order, uh, decides, hey, look, I've got these holes already drilled for me and he'll stuff his electric line right through the same hole that you run your interconnect or your speaker cable or whatever. Um, and we have seen this on a couple of our projects. And unless they're watching out for this, or you the homeowner, if you're being the general contractor, watch out for this, they'll do it. Um, because it's not their problem if something goes wrong with your audio and video system because it still turns on. And they're a bear to find out and to, you know, to, to understand what's happening. Um, and I have seen some horrendous situations like that. So um, be very careful about this very dark gremlin as to where your electric is running, your 220 or 110, and any cables you have associated with your system in relation to electric.